you can hire me to do these clean mods to your Volca. Look at that clean jack, there's lots of extra space. Nothing is touching, nothing's gonna be bad for you when you have a MIDI out. Everything in your life is gonna be okay. When you can use Korg, I mean, Boss chargers to run your Korg instead of the tiny Korg chargers. You can use your Boss AC adapter for your pedals. Yay! Oh, you can save your sequences too, finally. You can finally get sequences out of here and put them back in using a SysX manager. Woo! Do it. Pay me. Okay, these two resistors are going into this heat shrink and then going here. So rest assured there will be resistors. I'm using 47 ohms like Yamaha. Some people use 220. Either way, it's going to protect the input. It can work without them, but protection, you know? There we go. Nice and clean. This could be yours. Behold. Okay, the Volca bass is under the knife again. This time it's because I wanted a standard boss barrel jack for power, and it's the opposite polarity of this tiny one it came with that only other, a couple other Korg things use, and I want all my 9 volt stuff to use the same plug as all my other 9 volt stuff. Like, all my boss pedal stuff, even if it's not boss, uses the same thing. And I found it has to be a plastic edge jack because the polarity is opposite, the shell has to be positive, the outside of the barrel, and that can't touch this case because it's grounded at the MIDI jack, I found out. So you have to use a special type of jack that's plastic, and I had to use one that uh, comes out this way, not mounting flush. See the screwy times on the outside to give me enough space in there. And then you have to short the one that you pull out because it was ground switching, and then you have to wire in the switch pin on this, and if you don't know how to do that, don't do I did it again. MIDI out on the Volca bass this time. This one, you'll see there's like not a lot of places to put this jack. I dare say there's not another place to put this jack unless you make it stick out. So if you uh, can show me a better place to stick this MIDI jack and still get it flush, then I'll be very surprised. By surprised, I mean I will question the structural integrity of your solution. Here's a view of the back side. This time I made the wire colors kind of match more. So I think one of the best things you can do with soldering is to like use other things to hold the parts. Like I got the helping hands holding the resistor and I got this springy clippy thing that came with the soldering iron. It's like a $12, sorry I shouldn't bang on that while talking, $12 soldering iron from Amazon. So like yeah, I do fancy stuff with like cheap tools if it's the right tool. Oh man, I'm talking to you while bending this all around. I just want to give you a different view. So, uh, what was my point? Oh yeah, this clippy thing. It squeezes. And this is ancient. This is like from the 60s and it's like the same thing. These things are legit called helping hands. They make them, they're cheap and like that's what you search for to get one. So I've been really into clamp and stuff and I've been really into heat shrink lately. That's another thing that'll up your game in a hurry heat shrink and clamp and stuff and then notice of course I got both things hot the pad and the part both things have to be hot to melt the solder and that's all that's there is to it that's like the one easy tip